IT is an old fogey of an institution in so many ways, but when it comes to organizing the succession the British royal family makes the sharpest headhunting firm look like children playing pin the tail on the donkey. The forward planning was only too evident this week when Charles and Camilla joined the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge to open a medical rehabilitation centre in Nottinghamshire. Dubbed the new Fab Four by some newspapers, as opposed to the old Beatles, two members of which have split and gone to Canada, the planned succession was clear, next it would be Charles, then William, and so on. Charles and William appear sorted. In Germany, Chancellor Angela Merkel thought she had set up a smooth transition by steering Anne Great Cramp Karen Bauer into the leadership of the CDU, only for AKK to step down this week after one too many mistakes. In Russia, Vladimir Putin continues to rewrite the rule book on succession to ensure his reign as the last Tsar goes on for as long as he wishes. In the fictional world of HBO succession, viewers are apt at the goings on in the Roy family as the media mogul patriarch, played by Brian Cox pits his warring offspring against each other. Thoughts of succession are everywhere except, it seems, with a certain Scottish institution of relatively long standing, the SNP. It is preparing for Lan, life after Nicola, by behaving as though the possibility is as remote as an asteroid hitting Earth. Look how well that worked out for the dinosaurs. There is no prospect of a vacancy in the short or medium term, but if events of the last week have shown anything it is that the party, and by association its leader, is no longer invulnerable. The laws of political gravity, that what goes up does not stay there forever, have been seen to apply to the SNP just as they once did to Scottish Labour and others. In part the problem is one of longevity. Governments have natural shelf lives, and to have been in power for 13 years and still be as high in the opinion polls as the SNP is nothing short of astonishing. The SNP government is not stumbling from disaster to calamity and onto oblivion like John Major's administration. There has been no single shock powerful enough to catapult the party out of power. Rather, the party has suffered a series of blows, in education, the health service, the Derek Mackay scandal, and wider. Any government can suffer a run of bad luck, but at what point does misfortune begin to look self-inflicted? A failure to plan ahead, to take action in good time, to even acknowledge the extent of the problems, the SNP government looks culpable on several counts. If there is such a thing as the anti-Midas touch, the Scottish government has it at the moment. Its opponents in Scotland sense as much, but such is their general uselessness they pose little to no threat. For more on this story, visit the news article link.